Hi, I'm Corey. I'm a CPA and subject matter expert in managerial accounting. And in this video, I'm going to provide you with a high-level overview of the segmented income statement using variable costing. We'll start off by answering the question to what is an income statement? Next, we'll get an understanding of what a segmented income statement is and why it's useful to the decision makers in a business. Understanding how to prepare and use segmented income statements gives companies the ability to make better business decisions. So let's get started. When you were young, you probably received a report card at school. The purpose of this report card was to communicate your academic results to the users, in other words, your parents or family members, and provide you with ways to improve in the future. We can think of the income statement as having the same purpose in relation to a business. It's a report card that communicates important results about the financial performance of an organization. Most companies prepare an income statement at the end of every accounting period to communicate financial results to their users. This allows a variety of stakeholders such as company management, creditors, investors and the government to get some insight into the profitability of the company and make important business decisions. Segmented income statements allow users to drill down even further by narrowing in on specific areas of the business. Management may want to understand which products or divisions are more profitable than others. The segmented income statement allows them to gain insight into this and provides them with information to make better business decisions going forward. So let's dive in and develop an understanding of the purpose of the segmented income statement. Now while an income statement gives users information about the profitability of the business as a whole, segmented income statements allow managers to break this down further into individual segments. Segmented income statements allow management to make decisions such as whether to stop producing a particular unprofitable product or eliminate an unprofitable business unit. But what exactly is a segment? We can think of segments as separate subunits within an organization that warrant additional analysis. Examples of this include individual business units, divisions, departments, or products. Since managers use the segmented income statement to evaluate the performance of each segment, it's important to be able to distinguish between controllable and non-controllable expenses. To do this, in segmented income statements, fixed costs are separated into two key categories, direct fixed costs and common fixed costs. We know that fixed costs are costs that do not change based on the level of activity. A good example of this is rent or salaries. Let's break this down further into direct and common fixed costs. Direct fixed costs specifically refer to the fixed costs that we can directly trace to an individual segment. For example, if the segments were divisions of a business, a direct fixed cost for each division would be the rent for each division's office space and the salaries for the manager of each of these divisions. Direct fixed costs disappear in the event that a segment is eliminated from the company. Common fixed costs, on the other hand, are fixed costs that are shared across multiple segments. These costs relate to the overall operation of the company. In the event that an individual segment was eliminated, these common fixed costs would remain constant. For example, the CEO's salary would be considered to be a common fixed cost. Because even if one individual division shut down, since the CEO oversees all of the divisions, their salary would likely remain intact. Now the reason we separate direct fixed costs from common fixed costs is to enable the calculation of a segment margin. Segment margin is calculated by taking the sales from the individual segment, less the segment's variable costs, less the direct fixed costs for that segment. The common fixed costs are not included in this calculation. This segment margin is a strong indicator of the long-term profitability of a particular segment. In order for a company to continue operating an individual segment, it should at least be able to cover both its own variable and direct fixed costs. We'll look at an example of this shortly. Companies need to be careful when separating out direct and common fixed costs. Remember, only the fixed costs that can be traceable directly to a specific segment should be included in the direct fixed costs. This is a common place where mistakes are made in the preparation of the segmented income statement since it can be difficult to factor in all of the fixed costs. Even though this can be a time-consuming process, it's very important that companies spend time on this step in order to produce a result that is accurate and useful. If common fixed costs are included in the direct fixed costs, or vice versa, 
it'll be difficult for management to make an accurate assessment on the profitability of that segment. Now let's look at an example of a segmented income statement. Here we have ABC Company's contribution format income statement for their full company. Here we can see the company had a total sales of $1 million, less their variable costs of $400,000, bringing them to a contribution margin of $600,000, which is what they have available to cover their fixed costs. The total fixed costs for the organization were $225,000. If we subtract these out, we get a total net operating income of $375,000. Let's say the company has three divisions and wants to analyze the profitability of each division. This can be done by breaking down this income statement into a segmented income statement and looking at the segment margin for each division. The first step would be to split out the $225,000 total fixed costs into direct fixed costs and common fixed costs, like we discussed earlier. Here you can see this has been broken down into $125,000 of direct fixed costs and $100,000 of common fixed costs. What we've done here is remove the fixed costs that are common across all the segments and put them below the margin. This allows the company to come up with the total margin that is controllable by their individual segments of $475,000. This $475,000 controllable margin can now be split up across the individual divisions for performance evaluation purposes. By narrowing in on the individual segment margin for each division, we now have a clear picture of how much each division is contributing to the organization. For each segment, we take the sales less the variable costs to get a contribution margin for each. Next, we subtract out the direct fixed costs to get to the segment margin for each division. Here we see that Division A and Division B are both profitable, contributing $390,000 and $90,000 respectively to the overall controllable margin. However, if we look at Division C, we can clearly see that the division is not profitable based on the negative $5,000 segment margin. This tells us that Division C is not a profitable operation. Producing this segmented income statement has given management insight into which division is underperforming and tells them that they likely need to focus their efforts on Division C in order to improve their overall performance going forward. And that brings us to the end of this video. The segmented income statement provides users with critical information about a company's performance. It allows management to narrow in on individual segments of the business in order to focus their efforts in areas that need the most attention within the business. If you're interested in learning more about this topic or others, please feel free to check out our additional videos on many more related topics.